Hi everybody, this is Bogus Reviews, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the NECA 7-inch scale King Kong figure. So before we take a look at Kong, let's take a look at the accessories that he comes with. So first up, Kong comes with open hands that I like to display with this head sculpt. Um, the open hands look really good. They have a little bit of paint variation to them, and they have some pretty good sculpt detail. Especially with the fur and the texturing on the fingers and the inside of the hands. So that looks pretty cool. Up next, he has the fisted hands, which I like to use with the more angry head sculpt. And these look pretty good as well. Before I switch the head sculpts out, I did want to take a look at this head sculpt. Um, this looks more like a surprised Kong. I would have preferred a more neutral head sculpt, but it does look really good. It's got some really nice sculpt detail to it. The eyes are very bright. And on the angry head sculpt, the eyes are a little darker, you know, because he's more angry. Um, but you get the cuts sculpted in there above his mouth and a little bit of blood in the cuts. And they do use a uh, gloss finish for it. That way it looks fresh. So that's a nice attention to detail. You get some more cuts on the brows right there. And you get some really nice paint variation to the fur. You get some brown painted over top of that black. And the mouth is really detailed as well. The teeth are painted really nicely. And so is the tongue. If you look at the tongue, it has a gloss coat and then has some, uh, like a light pink collar painted over top of it. It looks really nice. So I did want to show the uh, head sculpts side by side before I switched them out. And I do like the angrier head sculpt. But as you can see, the eyes are darker on the head. And he's shown his teeth way more. Um, there you can see some of that great sculpt detail to the mouth. You get a little bit of some gloss painted there. Yeah, the detail looks very nice on both of these head sculpts. Um, one thing I also notice is the nostrils on the angry head sculpt are painted on, and they're not on this version. So that's kind of odd. But yeah, both of them have some really nice sculpt detail to them. So switching it out is pretty easy. You just pop that head off. And it's on a really different uh, ball joint that I've seen used on NECA figures. So there is that. And then you just pop this on. And like I said, it pops on pretty easily. And this head sculpt looks really good. Uh, you get some more of the blood painted over top of his face right there. And you get the same amount of uh, paint. You get some more good sculpt detail to his chest right there. You get some more of the cuts, or the claw marks, I should say, with the blood on them. So that looks really good. And the sculpt detail on this, all of the fur is sculpted very, very nicely. And it has some really good paint variation to it everywhere. Um, his, uh, his torso right here, his lower torso, could have used some more uh, paint detail. Because uh, comparing his arms... And his legs to his uh, lower torso right here, it just doesn't have that same level of paint to it. Because it is a separate piece. It is a uh, softer separate piece, like a uh, shell that was slipped over top of the, uh, the uh, joints right here. So that's probably why it has less paint detail. But um, it still has just a tad bit to it. But you get some really nice paint variation there with the browns over top of the black fur. There you can see some uh, darker shades of brown down here on the back of his legs. And then you get some sculpt detail to his feet. And the, uh, the toenails are painted on there. They're not painted on there the greatest, but they are painted on. And you get some paint variation to his toes. As well as some, uh, some texturing too. So yeah, the sculpt detail on this thing is crazy. And the articulation is also really well done. So uh, now, let's go ahead and go over his articulation. He has a ball-jointed head that can look up all the way. He can look uh, down just a little bit. He can't look down that far because of the open jaw right there. But he does have some pretty good range of motion there. He can move his head side to side. You can also get some tilting to it. It's a, it's a really nice type of ball joint, so you get some really good articulation from it. He has ball-jointed shoulders that can move just about all the way out. It would have been nice if they could have moved all the way out, but they don't. He has swivel at the bicep, double-jointed elbows, 
that can bend in all the way so you can get him beating his chest like that. I thought that was really nice that uh, he had enough articulation to do that. So you can get him doing that and that looks very awesome with that angry head sculpt. That looks really good. He has swivel at the forearm. It is just slight but it is in there. He has swivel wrist that can move down all the way, up just about all the way and side to side. He has a ball jointed diaphragm that can move all the way back. And he can move down just about all the way. Um, this does hinder it just a little bit, but he can crunch forward just about all the way. And he can move side to side and tilt. So really you can get motion all the way around right there. Um, he has ball jointed hips that can do a complete split. So they, uh, they are that crunchy kind of joint. So it will make noise when you move it, especially when you kick his legs forward. But he can move his legs forward all the way. And back all the way. So that does raise the uh, this soft plastic shell right here up just a little bit in the back. But he can kick back all the way. He has double jointed knee that can bend in all the way. You have swivel at the shin right here. He has uh, swivel at the ankles that can move down just a little bit and up just a little bit. Um, the ankles on mine don't move that well. They should have uh, more articulation to them, but they don't. But they do have a rocker that has some really good motion to it. So honestly, the only uh, downside to the articulation is the ankles, just because mine don't move. But I think that's probably just an issue with mine. Before I do some size comparisons, I wanted to see if the uh, Anne minifigure from the McFarlane King Kong uh, fit in his hand. Very loose grip, so... Well, I suppose you can get her resting in his hand like that, but she won't actually be gripped in his hand like the McFarlane Kong was. So, uh, if you wanted to do that, you could. It just requires a little bit of patience to get that, uh, to get her balanced in his hand right there. So, first up, there he is next to the McFarlane King Kong figure. And he is way bigger than the, uh, NECA King Kong. But his articulation is very, very limited. It's a, it's a really well done figure, but the articulation is super limited on him. There he is next to the Skull Island Kong figure from Playmates. And he is uh, too short. Uh, the other Kong was really big, and this one is really short. But there he is next to him. And finally, here he is next to one of the uh, NECA Godzilla figures. I think it's the Atomic Godzilla or Burning Godzilla, I want to say. And yeah, he is pretty underscaled for Kong. They don't scale well at all. Um, I was really hoping they would because I wanted to pose them together. Um, you can still probably make it work. But yeah, seeing them side by side, uh, Godzilla's way shorter than Kong. So overall, I would highly recommend this Kong figure. It is really, really well done. Um, it may be one of my favorite NECA figures from this year. The sculpt detail and the articulation one are very, very good. So yeah, I would highly recommend it. So that's my review. If you like this review, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.